simulation. It's quite successful picture of small scale mechanization. Okay, now labor use. This is the historical trend of the labor use in the wet season. The vertical axis measures Mondays used for oh, rice cultivation in one in wet season, in, sorry, in this case, dry season. Traditional farm, uh, when they were doing traditional farming in 1967, about 70 Mondays were used, and about half come from family labor, about half come from higher grade. Introduction of modern variety. In modern variety is very labor demanding uh, technology because you have to uh, do weeding, you have to do part, uh, uh, apply fertilizer. Because of that, mandate increase at maximum in 75, close to, almost close to 100 days. But after that, in the 80s, mechanization proceed, and also direct seeding was introduced in the dry season or, or on the ago. Uh, introduction of short duration modern variety also proceeded in the 80s. Therefore, required mandates in, for the rice uh, cultivation has continuously declined. And now, in the latest round, Monday required for rice harvesting, uh, rice farming is about uh, 50 to 60 days. Another feature I want to point out is the replacement of family labor. Here, look at the last bar. Uh, only 10 to 15 days, family, uh, farming family use family labor. And less of the work, uh, the work is done by the um, uh, higher grade. Because as we, I, we will see later, family labor becomes more expensive. They are more educated. They are going out for the non-agriculture world. So farmer is now trying to hire cheaper agriculture labor from outside. Related to the higher labor, I'd like to point out this recent teacher. Um, a new form of hired labor has been emerging these days. That is called Prochain 2 in Tagalog. That means a percentage. Okay. Then Prochain 2 has... <laughs> labor... Oh, it's okay. It's right. Uh, takes care of all rice farming activity from transplanting to harvesting under the instruction of a farmer. So this is a kind of permanent labor arrangement, but it's not like attached labor in the past. Okay? They come to the farmer and do a little work for them. I think many of you can easily understand because in your staff housing, you have made room with a bed, but nowadays nobody stay, live together in your house. They commute, right? The house, uh, house, uh, house help. Similar thing happening in the uh, labor arrangement. They don't live together in the house. They commute okay, and take care of it. And the Prussian 200 labor, laborer receive usually 10% of gross harvest at the end of the season. So this is actually the outsourcing of farm care taking. And this is a very ideal arrangement for the aged farmer's point of view. They are already very old, so they don't want to go to the field under the sun. So they just sit on a chair and is give instruction to the Prussian to hand labor, do this and do that, buy this and apply fertilizer details at this point of time, such and such. So this is very uh, convenient for the aged farmer, but it is also getting more difficult to find a skillful and experienced Prussian to hand labor. Because Prussian to labor are also moving to the non-agriculture sector. So more or less, uh, every three to five years, the farmer has to find the replacement. That is now the headache of the farmer. OK, changes in profitability and distribution. Here, the uh, vertical axis measured in peso in the real time. And blue bar shows the gross revenue, which is calculated like the definition is price times e. Okay? And orange bar uh, shows the total cost, which is 
the payload cost plus imputed cost. Imputed cost is sort of the hypothetical cost paid to family labor, own tractor, such and such. Payment to the own factory. So the gap between gross revenue and total cost, this portion in this year, is the profit. The striking fact in the wet season is that profit is disappearing, has been disappearing in the wet season. In 2000, it's almost, profit is almost zero. Okay. On the other hand, dry season, somehow they maintain uh, profit in farming. What are the underlying factors for this difference? First, as we have already seen, dry season, okay, as we will see, uh, paddy market price has been going down. But yield continuously increase in dry season. So this effect is larger than this, so revenue increase in dry season. On the other hand, yield stagnant in the wet season. Therefore, revenue decline in the uh, wet season. That was what is going on, the reason in the previous video. Total cost, going back to the, uh, this paragraph, more or less total costs are stable, both in dry season and wet season. But you should not uh, misunderstand this feature. This is not because farmers did not change their input, uh, input yield, but rather this is a result of the cost minimization, cost minimization effort by substituting inexpensive input for the expensive input. So farmers are seriously managing their farmer, and somehow with this effort, they maintain this level of power. Okay. Now, uh, the factor share. Factor share shows, okay, out of, let's say, uh, out of the uh, return, what proportion of that return goes to each individual factor? For example, in this period, this portion, maybe 50%, 15% of the uh, revenue goes to material input, such as fertilizer, seed, and chemical. And this portion, maybe 10 or 20%, uh, uh, went to higher grade. And then, up, look at, now look, let's look at this bar graph from the top. This portion, the brown portion, is a profit obtained by the farm. Uh, farm. And this one, share to the own land. This one, share to the own capital. And this one, share to the family level. Therefore, from here to here, this proportion uh, is the share to the farm operator. And this orange part, this is the uh, share to the land rent. Therefore, this is the share to the land rent. So from this figure, we can say that first, land rent, the orange part, okay, the share declines so quickly, and nowadays it's so small. This is one of the uh, benefit of the land reform. Land reform put the cap of the rent. So uh, also, uh, owner carriage beta is increased by the land reform. So the payment, land re payment to the land road has sharply declined. So this is contributed to, this contributed to the equity between land road and payment. Another feature is that in 2000, here this portion orange, dark orange is the share to the higher labor, and some from top to this portion is the share of farm. This means, and I didn't show the not figure, but this portion is larger than this portion in the labor. This means that the share of higher labor is larger than share of farm. So this indicates that poverty alleviation, is, so recent change in the shared change contributed to the poverty alleviation um, among poor agriculture labor. Well, 
similar in dry season, but as we have seen, dry season still maintain profit. So it becomes a little bit less obvious than the wet season. Okay, micro level impact, just one slide. I want to show this. This one, I think all of you are familiar with. Okay? And similar has happened in the central zone. Because of the green revolution and production increase, the real price of rice has declined, except this 2008 by CS960. Okay? So the beneficiary of the rice uh, of the green revolution is, we can say, the net rice value, who are marginal farmers who have to buy rice, or urban people. OK, nice farmers' characteristics. Because farm income increase, farmer increase the investment of the edu uh, of education to their children. So initially, only few college graduates exist, on also just moderate number of high school graduates. Most of them are the elementary school graduates. But nowadays, there are significant number of college graduates and high school graduates. Okay? And there's an elementary school graduates, this level still exists, but they are actually the parent generation. This. So most of the young belongs to this group. And once they get education, actually they lose the interest in the farming, they move out for the non agriculture, and now they are facing the lack of, lack of Success uh, in farm. Related to this, okay, this is the change of the income sources over time. Rice is a blue uh, area. It was a dominant source, so farming really means farming. Farmer really means farmer. Okay. But young one went out, and only the old age parent continue farming, and now only around. 20% of income comes from rice farming. And major source is either remittance, this one, or of farm employment. So there, I don't know whether we can still call them farmers. OK. Aging in rural area from 1979 to 2001. In 1979, we can find a lot of young people in the, in, in the village. This is a population pyramid. And the average years of the farm operators, 43 years old. But gradually, young exit for the cities, they moving out from the uh, rural uh, villages, gradually decrease. Now, the shape is not like pyramid anymore. Okay. And this shape is actually quite close to the shape of population pyramid in the developed countries, reflecting the aging of the society. Okay. So uh, these are the pictures from the field. They are the, uh, our root survey respondents. You can see how aging proceeded in the root survey area. Most of them are very uh, old. Like this old lady is almost the same year as Dandy, I think. Okay. Um, and but she is still managing farm using a protein to handle But please do not okay, I want to just make a remark. This is this is the aging of rural area, not entire Philippines. The entire Philippines, there are still a lot of young people. And because of the death of the husband or uh, sons are working in non sectors. Female-headed farm has been gradually increased. Now, 90% of the household is female-headed uh, farm, uh, farm household. So let me summarize the transformation of the central Luzon farming. First, traditional rice farming has been transformed into the modern farming, I mean, green revolution, through variation development and continuous adaption of modern varieties that contributed to the reduction of the real rice price. Okay. At the same time, this one increased the farm income together with land reform. Land reform increased farm income because tenants become landowners. Then owner doesn't have to pay land rent anymore. So then 
those who get higher income use that increase for the studying of their children. And ironically, those who get education, thanks to the fun green revolution, are not interested in funding anymore. They move out to uh, non-funding sector. And green revolution also increased the labor income of agricultural labor, as we have seen in the past share figure. And most of them are landless, so it contributed to poverty reduction, alleviation. And they also increased the schooling investment. But increase of the income is not as large as the farmers, so it's moderate. There was still significant number of agricultural labor exists in this group. Okay, going back to uh, farm management household, because of this feature, aging and lack of labor love is the uh, problem they are right now facing. Then the strategy for the future, or the, the strategy they are right now struggling, is the further mechanization, for example, the adoption of combine harvester to save the day, to reduce the labor requirement or outsourcing of farm, relying on agricultural labor, which are still, to some extent, available, even now. And given this current situation, now uh, I have only a few more slides. OK, this is just a visualization of what I told. Here, uh, one example, I, this, I visited this lady last week, an old lady farmer. Okay, yeah. very difficult to see. The one of the red, red blue blue is called a lady farmer. She managed the farm. And just this year, she got this new house, but not from her farm. But this house construction is financed by a daughter in Manila who is managing the logistics farm. Another example is this one. Um, one farmer bought combine harvester. It's not, it's actually they bought, they, this is not a rent. Uh, and they started using this machine, big uh, combine harvester uh, from last season. What are the implications for the future? First. OK, as we have seen, uh, there is an increasing demand for future mechanization, further mechanization. But there are some obstacles, possible obstacles. You know, land reform achieved a great success uh, to increase the farmer's income. And many of you, maybe some of you know, but that land reform actually is still prolonged. It's still valid, that reform. Therefore, under such situation, Farmers are reluctant to lease out their land because there is a still fear of the confiscation by the land reform office. So land rental market is very inactive. That is the you know uh, the obstacle for the consolidation of the land. So to to enjoy the scale economy of the mechanization, prerequisite is a land consolidation, but probably that is not so easy in the field. And they could be resulted, could resulted in the decline in productivity. That is exactly suffer, the Japanese agriculture suffered that right now. And probably Korea and Taiwan too. Philippines might follow that direction if this problem is very uh, serious. Also, land improvement is incomplete. You know, rolling landscape and soft soil, under that condition, it's very difficult to operate combine harvester. So combine, diffusion of the combine harvester may be very location specific. OK, another issue is outsourcing of farming under protein to arrangement. This may increase inefficiency. As we have, as I already mentioned, you know, uh, because of the supply, lack of the labor, laborers, mm -hmm. frequent replacement of Prussian 200 laborers. Every three or five years, they have to 
find a replacement. But new ones may not so familiar with your flow because they are new to the flow. And they may not know exactly very plot specific agroecological feature. Actually, Hayami and Otsuka 1993 find that inefficient production by such a caretaker, such protein Therefore, this inefficiency could be the future problem and under this context. Another issue is brought in the wet season is this is an emerging concern. It's a man-made disaster. A flood Flood spots are very patchy, and seriousness varies by location. So, I actually for this too, I am not quite sure what is the best strategy. Yet. What is the best? Maybe development of new varieties, abiotic stress fit to this kind of uh, you know uh, condition, or maybe engineering approaches maybe more appropriate. It is okay. And the last one I'd like to point out is this. Um, we need further effort to maintain low insecticide use. So far, the Philippines use the lowest amount of insecticide than other Asian countries like Thai, Vietnam, and China. The bigger the one, uh, you know, uh, positive side of the Philippines was one. But new varieties released since 1997 have much less resistance to pests and diseases. Therefore, uh, recurrence of the insecticide use may occur in the future. So should resistance trait be added again in the future or in the, in the future varieties or are there alternative approach to avoid uh, insects? So that could be important to uh, attend for the future. Well, uh, this is a summary of the book uh, we have published uh, recently, and for more detail, please look at the detail. The first author is Pai Moya, and myself, Randy, Sam Mohanty, and Fe, Gaston, and, and Rose. Okay. And you can download this one for free. You don't have, have to memorize this website. You can just Google it. And you can also download the data, raw data, of, based of the group survey. Additional, ad uh, one more advertising. Using the group survey data, the simulation game program is developed, which is called the game of rice. This one is simulation as if you grow rice as a farmer. Okay? Then you can learn how farmers actually you know, struggling with many kinds of issues. And please visit this website. Third acknowledgement, uh, I, like, I don't think I have enough time to mention all the names, but I'd like to at least say that above all, our deepest gratitude goes to the farmers in that sense. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Kay, for the great uh, presentation. Very last is time for questions. So maybe you can Randy and Pai, you want to respond to? Insecticide use in 70s and then dropping it fast. And you seem to have concluded that maybe because the varieties which were released later on, they had more insecticide resistance. Mm -hmm. resistance. Mm -hmm. Now, there was another view about this that a lot of private companies were pushing insecticide use. And, and so there was a heavy use of, I would say, you know, unwisely use of insecticide. So, what is really cause and effect relationship? Is it really because the insecticide resistance has gone up, that's why farmers don't have to apply insecticide? Or is what it was not ne necessary in any way? And other question, Kesan, is it possible for him, from your data, the productivity increases, at least in dry season? Could you separate out the effect of varieties and management? Okay, um, first question, our understanding is the uh, 
um, major causes of this decline is here as we in the educational campaign and IPM. And probably I didn't mention the introduction of pest and disease resistance variety, but probably that also factor. But yeah, that's a good point. Uh, and so if anybody familiar with that aspect, maybe you can. I'm not standing. And just, just one. Second point, yeah, that the separation is possible through by using, I think, a regression analysis. And what are the underlying factors? We can do statistical analysis, identifying what are the underlying factors of the yield improvement. One, maybe some portion from the yield, some portion from management. That's possible. Yeah, uh, maybe the microphone. Uh, the insecticide question is quite interesting because early on, you promoted insecticide use, and uh, they had many kits with fertilizer, insecticide, and so forth. They hadn't read the Silent Spring by Rachel Carlson, uh, and I was I had plots out there that if I didn't put insecticide on, the people from the next the, the insects from the next paddy would come. I took my stuff out of the station here, down to Kalawan, because there was so much insecticide used. Then, gradually, the farmers started using less and less. They went from about five applications down to about two applications. Now, Erie actually came later. And you know, many of you know K.O. Huang. Uh, K.O. Huang is a great, uh, advocate of overuse of insecticide. And Kayla Wong told me that uh, finally Klaus Lampe called a meeting here at Erie to say do something about the overuse of insecticide at the Erie station. And he said, he wrote, and Kayla Wong wrote the directions. And he said that he had a terrible time arguing with some of the uh, scientists like uh, Gerda Kush and S.K. Dada because they were in bed with the insecticide companies. And so finally, uh, and by this time, uh, Prabhu Pengali and some of the people at the college were writing about not only the bad insect, insect damage on the crop, but the bad insect damage to humans and to people. And now, uh, the, the, the question of what happened in the Philippines, this statement is a hypothesis, not a <laughs> complete agreement. In terms of the education campaign, yes. But I can tell you that there's been brown plant opera attacks in Thailand and in Indonesia within the last year or so. So in se my feeling is that Erie needs to take a stronger stance Working with outfits like the, the Philippine uh, Pest, Pesticide and Fertilizer Association to convince the governments to ban the use of insecticide because the Chinese are dumping all kinds of cheap insecticide as, as well as the private sector. That's my that's my speech. <laughs> In the time time, we will take the um, last two questions. So, George, go ahead. Um, thanks here for this educative uh, presentation. I was wondering what are the uh, driving factors for farmer to continue rice farming in wet season since last one decade because the data is indicating that there is almost no profit. Um, the second thing is, uh, I was wondering whether you have considered mechanization, contribution of mechanization on imputed cost. Um, looks like, I was wondering about like whether that factor has been uh, considered because mechanization has been picked in last one decade. Okay, um, first about the uh, yeah, wet season. Well, personally, um, maybe all farmer doesn't have to continue with season, regardless if it is less profitable. And 